Hello students, in this video we'll introduce chi-squared random variables. If we let x1 through xn be standard normal, random variables, i.e. an independent, it's important, i.e. x, any one of these, xj, is normally distributed with mean 0 and variance 1. Then consider a random variable z, which is x1 squared plus x2 squared plus all the way down to xn squared. So this function, this random variable z, is the sum of squares of n normally distributed random variables with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. Okay? These types of variables have a distribution. These are called, these are are chi-squared with n degrees of freedom. Random variables. Okay. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to give you a sense of what these random variables are doing. These random variables appear a lot when you're estimating sample variances. And so we need to sort of formalize what they are and understand properties of distribution in order to basically prove some results about sample variances. So these occur when studying sample variances. Good. All right, so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to consider a, let's consider a simple case of this example. Let's consider z is equal to x1 squared. This is, of course, just what? It's just chi squared with one degree of freedom. Okay? I would like to know what the probability density of this function is. So if I look at the probability that z is less than or equal to t, this, of course, is the CDF of this random variable z. And this is the same thing as, since z is x1 squared, this is the same thing as the probability that x1 is between negative square root t and positive square root t. Now, x1 is normally distributed, so this is just the CDF of a standard normal at root t minus the CDF of a standard normal at negative root t. Okay. Well, of course, this CDF at negative root t is 1 minus the what? Is the same as 1 minus the phi of root t. So I can write this as phi of root t minus 1 minus phi of root t, because that's the same thing as the, the other tail. It's a symmetric distribu distribution, so this is true. And this is going to be what? This is going to be 2 phi of the square root of t minus 1. So I can find the what? I can find the probability distribution of a chi squared with one degree of freedom by differentiating this. So if we do the derivative of this, so the derivative of the CDF, so CDF prime, is going to give me our PDF of z. This is the PDF of z. And so the PDF of z is what? The PDF of z is going to be, well, it's going to be 2 phi prime of square root t times 1 over 2 square root t. That's the chain rule, and the derivative of 1 is nothing. So the 2's are going to cancel out over here. And what will this be? This is going to be, well, it's just the standard normal PDF at root t. So it's going to be 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the what? e to the negative root t, negative root t quantity squared over 2 times 1 over square root t. Good. And so what we have here now is we have this distribution. The distribution is 1 over the square root of 2 times the square root of pi times the square root of t e to the negative t over 2. And now, this turns out to be a member of a special class of distributions, gamma distributions. And so what this is over here is this is gamma. So let me remind you, so recall that a random variable q is in the class gamma 
alpha and theta. If it's PDF has the form, PDF has the form x to the alpha minus 1 e to the negative x over theta over theta to the alpha and then times gamma of alpha. And now it turns out that gamma of 1 half is equal to what? It turns out that gamma uh, of 1 half, a special property of gamma is that gamma of 1 half, and we'll see this in another video, is the square root of pi. So this over here is gamma of 1 half. That's 2 to the 1 half, my alpha. That's um, t to the 1 half minus 1 in the denominator, and my theta is equal to 2. So this distribution over here is what? This distribution is gamma distributed with what parameters? With alpha being equal to 1 half, and with what? And with theta being equal to uh, 2 in this case, because my I have 2 right there. So that's my theta is going to be equal to 2. Okay. And so more generally, we see that, so a chi-squared with one degree of freedom is gamma 1 half 2. And then more generally, what I can see is if I add up n copies of this, I will again get a gamma distribution with the number of degrees of freedom over 2 as my parameter for alpha in the problem. Thank you very much.